So hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I'm gonna do some RAM stuff. So uh, right now set up on the test bench is my old uh, test bench kit which is some Hynix 8 gigabit CJR um, and also visible right now is my new test bench kit which is Samsung 8 gigabit B die. Now the B die kit's not gonna be important today because I'm gonna be comparing this CJR to more CJR. So this right here is a Corsair CJR stick. Uh, I've had this for quite a while. Actually, this is probably the oldest memory stick that I still have. Uh, there was there, there were two Hynix uh, AFR kits that I gave away to my sister. She has them now. Um, and I think this is the oldest stick that I still have. Um, I never really used it because it's just a single stick. I got this with uh, a motherboard. It included this one stick and that's just kind of it. Um, and I never really did anything with it because I, I, I never had a full kit. And uh, like, I, 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 somehow I didn't think of just buying another stick to match this, um, which now as it turns out is a good idea because this thing is trash. Like I always knew the stick was weaker um, then, uh, oh, the camera's really having a hard time focusing today. I just put it down like this. Um, so, like, I always knew that this Corsair dim, which, uh, by the way, if you're wondering, uh, this is not what it usually looks like. I took the heat spread off. Also, here's your proof that it's CJR, if it decides to focus, that is. Yep, there you go. You can see it's version 5.32. That's Hynix CJR. Um, and yeah, so I always knew the stick was weaker than the uh, Patriots I have. Which I thought, you know, just, I guess, unlucky chip. Like, un unlucky dim. Like, this is a 3000 seal 15 thing. These are 3600 seal 17s. Like, neither of them are strong bins. Though this one is a stronger one. So I kind of thought, yeah, maybe just a weak bin. So today, out of boredom... I took the heat spreader off of this thing, and um, I discovered this. So this is a single rank stick, like it has one rank of 8 gigabit memory chips, which makes it an 8 gigabyte stick, but it's using a dual rank B1 PCB. I assume that it, this this isn't like if you look at this, you would think, yeah, that's just a box standard A2 PCB with like Corsair's RGB tacked on. But no, it's the dual rank version of A2, which for some reason is called B1 and not B2. I don't know, ask JDEC. So this is a B1 PCB. Um, so basically, this is a dual dual sided A2, and this is really really bad for a stick that's not actually dual rank. Because it's the same, it's the same idea as why uh, having a two dimmer motherboard like this one is better than having a four dimmer motherboard. Because even if you're not using the extra slots, just the slots being there, like, causes interference. Like the empty slots, just by being there, just. Like, there's un unterminated traces and pieces of metal. Like, they're like little antennas that just cause interference. So that's why bots like this exist, where there's only two dim slots that are specifically meant for overclocking. Because they overclock better. First off, the second dim is now closer to the CPU, and, like, you get rid of that interference. There there's no extra slots anymore. And so, having these unterminated traces and pads on the dim while not actually using them for anything is just bad. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate this. Now I need to swap the uh, display output to the capture card actually. So by uh, so it actually <laughs> sees this. Seems to be detecting something. Oh hey, yay! Uh, it's sized wrong, but uh, ah, there we go. Resolution's off, but you can still see the important bits. So this is test mem five. 
completing the like standard profile it has uh, stable. Um, and the settings is like some pretty basic settings like this. The, the, the Viper kit can do this no problem. The Viper kit can actually do a lot more than this. So this right now is 3700, 18, 19, 19, 39. Uh, and I think 1.44 volts. Yeah, I think 1.44. So, and like, you know, it, it, it's stable. This kit can, the kit can do 3800, 16, 19, 19, 28. So like, this is not the limit of the kit. The, the cast latency is actually because of the motherboard. For some reason, this motherboard like really doesn't like having lower than CL18 at a certain point in frequency. Like, if you go above 3600, like, you just have to set the cast latency higher, which is a unique quirk of uh, this motherboard. It doesn't really bother me that much, because, like, I have proven it, and other people have proven it time and time again that the cast latency does barely anything, so having a slightly higher cast latency is not going to hurt your performance. Um, but, yeah, just that that's why the cast latency is higher. So, yeah, so this is really easy to run for this kit, uh, and as you can see, it's stable. You can also kind of gauge the speed. Because, like, the funny thing about TM5 is, the faster your RAM kit is, the faster it completes the tests. So this at 16 minutes is not very fast. Um, like, uh, if you have a B-Die kit that's, like, a semi-good settings, it can complete this in under 10 minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm now just gonna turn... No, please don't update. Thank you. Um... I'm not going to turn this off, and I'm going to put our single stick in. So it already has an advantage because it's only one stick, so there's only eight chips instead of 16 spread across two DIMMs. And also we'll be going into the single DIMM slot that's closest to the CPU, so it doesn't even have to deal with having half of the uh, memory kit be in a channel that has a longer trace. And also, no, this is not going to cause interference now, because these two DIMM slots are on different channels. The reason why it causes interference on four DIMMA bots is because you have two slots on the same channel. So this is not causing interference right now. And we're going to turn this on. <laughs> the LEDs look really weird without the uh, split thing, the fuser thing. Um, and, it's, and, and I'm just going to show you how it spews arrows because this thing sucks. Because Corsair chose a dual rank PCB. For some reason. Like, I, I, I can tell it's a cost saving thing. This is a 3000 seal 15 bin. It's not very fast. There's no reason to like use an optimized PCB for this, because this is a bin that can, like, literally everything can run this. Yep, there we go. Already got an error. Three arrows. I, I wonder how long this will survive. Like, same settings. Same memory chip. It's all CJR. Like, five arrows, six, seven, eight, nine. At some point, you just get a flood of arrows and then it blue screens. Um, yeah, so like, I mean, I've already proven to you that this is CJR. You can also see... Oh, You can see this little code, like, right under the big blue P. Just needs to focus in. Man, come on. There you go. Uh, you see the CFA? The C stands for CJR. So, sadly, Patriot stopped using, like, my BDI kit just has stars there. It doesn't actually have the code anymore, so they stopped doing that. But this kit is old enough so that it has the code, and you can tell definitively that it is CJR. <laughs> Look at those arrows go. It's so unstable. <laughs> like, this Windows is completely new. I, have, I, I do not care if I completely break this Windows now by doing this. I, I actually want to see where it crashes. Um, but I think this is proof enough that this stick sucks. Like, it's just a single stick. Like, it, it has the best latency ever. Like, you, you see how close the DIMM slots are to the CPU. Like, the, the block barely fits next to the slot. Like, it cannot make this any closer to the CPU. Like, this DIMM has, like, the best case setup 
for being stable motherboard size. So this dim has no excuse for being bad. It's still going, it's actually kind of impressive. I, I, I would have expected it to die by now. Like, I guess it's super unstable. Well, well, I guess it's very unstable, but like not super unstable. Where it like literally cannot sustain itself. <laughs> Uh, well, we're gonna have, like, all the tests are out soon. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, what the hell, Corsair? Like, I know this is not a super high bin, but could you at least try? <laughs> Where they're, like, just not selling as many dual rank kits that... Yeah, maybe this was meant to be used with, like, Samsung 4 gigabit e -Dye. And then E die like four gigabit DDR4 supply dried up. Well, though, like this is CJR. This would have gone into like an AFR. Maybe that's why my AFR kit. I also had an AFR kit of it, like the the ones I gave to my sister. Those also sucked. They probably also have the same PCB. <laughs> but yeah, like um, yeah, it sucks. Like it, it could totally be that the dim just you know like is worse, but this is not hard to run for CJR. Like, the only things about these settings that CJR cannot do better is like TRCD and TRP. It, tip, it does not really go lower than 19 at this frequency. Everything else, the TRAS, the TRFC, the TCL can go lower, the frequency can go higher, and well, the command rates at motherboard quark again, like uh, th th this thing runs everything at 2T above 2666. And I have not spent the time trying to figure out how to make it work at 1T yet. Um, that's what I get for <laughs> choosing a Z270 motherboard. Uh, it's great otherwise, like, performance is still great. It's just that you, you don't get the very satisfying timings out of it. Um, is this actually not gonna crash now? Like, it's so unstable, come on. Huh. Well, uh, I, I guess we might not see our blue screen, um, but I think 600 arrows is is enough to call it unstable. So, um, yeah, that, this is a bit of a shorter video, because I, I just cracked this dim open. Like, the first thing I was disappointed is because Cos actually rebranded the chips, I, I expected to see, like, some um, Hynix branded CJ, like, it actually says CJ on it, but no, the the, the Chips are like rebranded with the Corsair logo. It, it still says like HYC, which tells you that it's Hynix CJR, but uh, that, that, that's not the, uh, like, uh, if it was, if, if they used the original thing, it would literally just say CJR at the end, which is where the JR comes from. The actual part of it is just the C. Um, but yeah. So I, I, I just removed the heat spreader from this because I was bored. And then I saw, oh no, there we ran out the chips, damn it. And then I turned it around and I was just like, wait, what the hell? Like, why are they using a dual rank PCB? <laughs> like, the, like, again, the, these settings are super easy to run for CJR. Even if this is a bad CJR state, it should be able to run this. I'm blaming the PCB for this. Like, I'm blaming the PCB for this. These are super easy settings to run. Like, I might be able to get the save if I, like, loosen out TRCD, like, a whole bunch. But, like, at that point, it's not CJR settings anymore. That's, like, CDI settings. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm just rambling on at this point. So, let, let's just end the video. Uh, before I get to a thousand errors. It's, I don't think it's gonna crash. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for watching. I don't know. There was nothing to learn here other than that. Low bin Corsair kits use weird PCBs that are like really bad for overclocking. Um, yeah, so goodbye.